bimaxillary protrusion. What is it and what causes it? Well, bimaxillary protrusion is normally noticed as a protrusion which is a forward inclination of the upper and lower front teeth and the bone that they sit in. So what we call the alveolar bone that they sit in is bulged forwards, often with the teeth lips being slightly bulbous and separated. Now, one of the big mistakes of modern science has been to analyse x-rays when x-rays arrived and take the normal data. So assume that in the 50s and 60s, 1950s and 60s, when x-rays became available and lots of people were x-rayed to see what normal was. And the assumption that that was normal was probably one of the biggest mistakes within orthodontics. Since malocclusions only been, crooked teeth, sorry, has only been around for about 200 years in the general population, or overt malocclusion. Well, that means that only 150 and a little bit more years before those x-rays were taken, there was no malocclusion, meaning that the whole population has probably been affected Meaning that this x-ray, or this, sorry, this image behind me, with the face here, in real terms, in ideal terms, should be up here. So what's happened is everything's dropped down. You can't see this from any of the normal orthodontic references, because the orthodontic references suggest that this position is relatively normal. But it's not. This is ideal. This is how all our ancestors were. This is how all people with naturally occurring perfect occlusions are. This is where all the beauty kings and queens are. And the indigenous populations alive today are. So the all of them are actually very similar position. So they're here. And as you drop down, you drop down and back. Because everything's rotating in a downswing pattern. And as that's occurring, of course, the tongue's got to go somewhere because the tongue has got an option. It can go backwards into the airway, or it can go somewhere else. And breathing is probably the most important thing in most people's lives. So people are going to move the tongue so that they can facilitate a normal, comfortable airway. Now, the way we cope with that situation differs. Everyone's different. But there are certain racial groupings. And the racial groupings are that certain ethnic groups tend to respond to this insult, this issue, in different ways. And it's classic within the Afro-Caribbean population to respond by pushing the tongue forwards. It's a very good way of getting the tongue out of the airway. And as you push the tongue forwards, well, you're going to open those front teeth as the tongue comes through. Now, there's two different shades of bimaxillary protrusion. There's a bimaxillary protrusion with individuals that keep their lips together, that's a milder form, and in this situation the teeth touch and the lip form is usually better. And then there's the bimaxillary protrusion when the lips have separated, maybe there's a slightly less muscle tone as well, and a little bit more of a downswing. And these individuals are going to have an anterior open bite, the lips rest separated. Um, often the lips can become larger because there's a large um, muscular action going on with the lips in an attempt to bring them together whenever the individual is thinking about it, when they're conscious of doing this. And of course, that force there is indicated where it's pushing down in around the teeth and that can slightly modify the positions of the teeth. And rather than having the teeth generally open, the teeth can come in at a slightly more overt angle. But 
It generally leaves an anchor open bite with the lip separated in the more severe cases. Um, now, there are certain ways to um, treat this. I mean, if you look from an orthotropic point of view, you're going to try and move everything up and forwards and get the length there. And by getting the length, you can fit the whole of the tongue in in front of the airway and hopefully correct the situation so you're not going to need any retention and then the individual is better. Um, conventional orthodontics tends to approach this in a slightly different manner because if you see by maxillary protrusion, well, if you take two teeth out, so you were to take two premolars out, you then pull the teeth back and you can really very nicely correct by maxillary protrusion. And not infrequently, people will retrain their tongue and the tongue being more or less a muscle, if it's well retrained and someone reduces the activity, it can shrink to fit the space that it then has. And frequently these can be quite stable situations. Of course, frequently they are stable situations and there can be a high level of relapse within this, but you will get many cases presented where there is no relapse and this can be completely stable. And this wide variation continually confounds or confuses us within the profession about exactly what to do. But by maxillary protrusion, there is two ways of treating it. Either you're going to try and take the whole face up and forward, provide space for those that tongue so that you cure the problem, and that can nearly always, if you're successful in getting that growth change, be stable or you can take some teeth out and you can pull those teeth back and that at times can be very sustainable.